have Andrew Glenn, who's a representative from the New York City Economic Development uh, Corporation. And uh, what's really interesting about Andrew's work is you know, it's sort of situated at the intersection of all of the economic forces that are really driving you know, much of the logistics and port expansion and everything like that that, that Lisa was discussing. So excited to have you. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get your slideshow set up. Okay. Thank you very much. So I, I got acquainted with dredging on a, a door, dark and stormy night at uh, Fort Monmouth uh, about uh, 13 years ago when we had um, took, um, a uh, public hearing that the Army Corps of Engineers arranged uh, for a dredging project in Queens that uh, uh, was a project that originally was uh, expected to go uh, into the ocean to the Harz site. And, instead uh, was, uh, was really fought by environmentalists because the material contained contaminants that uh, environmental groups felt had high levels of contamination and uh, the Army Corps and other uh, resource agencies did not feel that way. So basically that led to uh, uh, a, uh, a hearing that involved about a thousand longshoremen uh, from the port squaring off with a thousand environmentalists. So I don't think we have a slide of that, Lisa, but that was uh, quite a night because uh, I think the MPs had to move in to uh, clear the hall. So, uh, so it's a real thing for us, those, those of us who work in, uh, on dredging, that uh, you know, not, in, in, not uh, in the too distant past, we've had real fights in the region over what to do with this uh, sediment. And uh, it's an amazing thing. But uh, one of the things I, I think that's, that's good about the story is that, as you've seen and you'll hear more, is that we're making amazing progress. So. Um, I've been at New York City EDC uh, for 15 years, and one of the first things that I learned, and my, uh, my department is called Ports and Transportation, so we're kind of the mini port authority for the city of New York. Uh, but one of the things I learned early on in the game, because I was asked to do a, uh, a study of the city's ports when I started in 1997, and the first thing that I learned that is if you're going to have any progress in developing our port facilities in New York, and uh, I think a lot of you do know the history here where you know, New York uh, really beginning with the Dutch uh, settlements in the 17th century and certainly all the way through the English and, uh, and um, uh, the, um, you know, the development of the port uh, after the revolution. Uh, you know, the port was really at the center of the economic life of the city, and uh, you know, our things, institutions that we rely on today, that we think, you know, like Wall Street, you know, really started out uh, because of uh, the port activity, insurance, uh, finance, all of those industries grew up because of this amazing port, and it's it's amazing because. You know, once you pass Sandy Hook in uh, Coney Island and uh, go through the Narrows, you're in quiet water. You're in a port that um, that has lots of surface area for uh, ships to tie up to, and you know the old finger piers that ring Manhattan and the Brooklyn waterfront and uh, the Jersey coastline were all meant to take advantage of this uh, really amazing natural harbor. The only thing that really doesn't work is that it silts up, you know, way too much. So it has to be constantly dredged. And as Lisa said, since 1876, and I think since 1888, there's been a, a maintenance project in New York Harbor to keep the channels open. So this is just uh, pictures of uh, dredge. I think uh, I think this is uh, that says it all. And you'll see a lot of that tomorrow. Yeah. And I think Lisa covered this as well, but. Um, one of the things that you know, one of the things that you know we struggle with on the New York side is that we don't have, except for the Hallam Hook uh, or New York Container Terminal uh, in Staten Island, we uh, you know we have few large-scale port facilities. What we have are a lot of smaller facilities. I think, and uh, you can barely make it out, but uh, alongside Governor's Island is the Red Hook Container Terminal, which is a small facility uh, that handles about. 80,000 containers a year, and you know the Port of New York and New Jersey handles about 5.3 million containers per year. So we have these small facilities. We also have where the uh, uh, where the triangle is, and I don't remember. I do have a pointer, but green uh, button. Green button. Green button. Green button. Green button. The button with the green line. It's got a green, green line. line. Oh yeah, it's a very subtle green line. So that's <laughs> a, like, it looks great. All right. So uh, so up here we have um, you know as, as part of the 50 foot deepening we have this channel, the Bay Ridge Channel, and alongside that is the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal. And we kind of learned recently the hard way that 
Uh, this channel has not been dredged since the uh, mid-1980s, and uh, you can imagine what's happened there. And, and again, this is not for deep draft shipping. We have a 33-foot berth at the end of the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal that we want to do automobile carriers, which typically are relatively shallow draft vessels. But um, there are parts of this channel that are in the mid-20s or low-20s. And we thought we were doing the right thing uh, by, by uh, you know, looking for something that didn't require 50 feet of draft or 45 or even 40 feet of draft, which is what we have at Red Hook. So we went for something around in the 30s. And even there, because of uh, the time span uh, since the last time we've done maintenance dredging, um, we have an issue with uh, the clearances in the Bay Ridge Channel. Not insurmountable, but we looked at um, a cost estimate uh, with the Army Corps. How much would it, would it cost at the prevailing you know, uh, wages of dredgers uh, to, uh, uh, to deepen the Bay Ridge Channel just to get to, say, a depth of uh, 40 feet? And it was, uh, it was in the uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. So we have a dredging problem in New York uh, because we have this we have this amazing port facility, and you know through the various programs that the city is uh, really that uh, I collectivized and we call the Waves Program, the Waterfront Vision and Enhancement Strategy. We want to reactivate so much of the city's waterfront, and one of the biggest challenges is dredging. And how do you how do you really get to a uh, a price point where you can afford to dredge more widely, not just for uh, commercial shipping, but also also for marinas and recreational boating as well. And I'll leave this to Doug. <laughs> well, maybe not. I mean, what I wanted to point out here is that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. No, no, it's just interesting because you know the Harz is a the, the historic area remediation site is where the clean dredge goes, and so I think illustrative of this is you know the city's. Um, uh, cruise terminal, uh, the main cruise terminal, where you know the big uh, ships from the Carnival Line, Norwegian, Holland America, you know, and this is you know this is a very uh, you know big industry, uh, and the passenger ships you know still call on the west side of Manhattan. Um, we have been very lucky because there the dredge material coming mostly coming down you know the Hudson River. It's basically topsoil from the Hudson Valley. Uh, right now, that material is clean enough. Uh, some years by a lot, and some years by a little. But um, we're able to bring that material out to the cars. Thank goodness, because the difference in cost um, of doing that kind of dredging it varies, say, from uh, around eight to ten dollars per cubic yard. If we get into an unfortunate situation where that um, material no longer is clean enough to go out to the cars, we're looking at a cost of $80 to $100 a cubic yard. And at that point, we as a city have to ask some hard questions about whether that cruise terminal uh, can, you know, can still uh, you know, be cleared and function the way it has. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that we don't think we're going to have to face, but it's something that's always in the back of our mind when we talk, when we, uh, we talk about dredging. So. Um, and this is one of the reasons, uh, one of the concerns that we have, uh, but it seems to uh, have you know, not um, really raised its ugly head, which is um, the fact that they're, um, the, the main uh, contaminant of concern are the PCBs uh, in the upper Hudson. And um, you know, this is um, you know, the, uh, the dredging uh, that's taking place to clean up the upper Hudson. You know, and everything is connected to everything else. And I love your chart here, but is uh, you know the concern has had been in the past that some of that uh, PCBs would come down the Hudson and start to affect our piers uh, on the Hudson River. So you know, just again, showing that connectivity between uh, between what goes on upstate and what happens downstate. So so here's a, just to illustrate, I think the the cost differential between you know what New York and New Jersey faces and what other ports on the east coast of the United States face. You know, since we're, we're EDC, so we look at these numbers. So you know, just from the, uh, from the get-go, you know, this all-in cost $99 a cubic yard, which is not atypical you know, as compared to a Norfolk, uh, you know, Virginia uh, cost. And that's with, uh, uh, with the processing of the dredge. And then uh, you know, what we've seen, even when we don't process the dredge, this is contaminated dredge, and we put it in uh, you know, places like the confined disposal facility in Newark Bay, 
it, we're still looking at um, a relatively high cost to dredge compared to the cost of going uh, into the ocean, which is what the port was really based on, was having a cheap place to put the material. So, it's, uh, so when we talk about upland placement, there is a cost to that, and someone has to bear that cost. And uh, since dredging is a constant thing, you know, it's like uh, digging uh, sand castles by the seashore, you, you know, it's a cost, it's a maintenance cost. Um, we've been lucky because we've been able to capitalize that through the 50-foot uh, dredging, but um, that may not be uh, the only option uh, open to us as we go forward and we're just doing maintenance. So, so that's what it looks like. I do want to point out um, we have some legends of dredging in the audience, uh, particularly Kerry Mullins and Katie McGuckin, because uh, they, uh, Kerry Mullins, uh, this is at her shop at Don John, where these guys uh, taught us how to use dredge material uh, in a processed way to use upland. And because of the work that they did, we have been able to place a million yards of, of material in New York City at the Fresh Kills landfill uh, and places in Jamaica Bay on the landfills in that area as well. The challenge for New York now is to find more sites like that and to bring down the cost of dredging. So um, I think I'm out of time, but um, this, was, uh, this was just illustrative of what we have done in other, in other areas and things um, uh, related to some of the dredging that we don't even talk to, like places like the Bronx River, where um, without a funding stream to do these kinds of projects, um, uh, New York businesses, maritime dependent businesses, are not able to dredge. And that's a challenge that we need to take on with the state of New York. And just to illustrate kind of what we have done beneficially, and again, with, with the help of Katie and uh, Carrie, is putting material onto landfills and using it as a, uh, as a shaping contour layer um, to, uh, it, you know, to create the final topography at uh, landfills like Fresh Kills. And, um, and then I just leave you with a final article about um, the need for cooperation, uh, not competition. Something that's affecting some of our ports to the south, but something that New York and New Jersey has actually done remarkably well, which is cooperate on this issue. And with that, happy note, I'll leave you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, Andrew.